In the landscape of 1980s television, one series stood out for its innovative approach and futuristic narrative Max Headroom. What enduring qualities contribute to its status as an everlasting symbol of the industry? A glimpse into the lesser known facets of this TV gem might provide some answers. Set in a dystopian future where television reigns supreme, Max Hedrum captivated audiences with its blend of cyberpunk aesthetics and social commentary. Premiering in 1987, the series unfolded a narrative that explored the consequences of an overly commercialized and media-dominated society. As we delve into the less explored corners of Max Hedrum's production, one might find it intriguing that the character Max Hedrum originated from a British talk show, later evolving into an AI anomaly in the American series. Such transitions often harbor untold stories behind the scenes. The enduring appeal of Max Hedrum lies not only in its speculative take on media culture, but also in its ability to foresee technological advancements that would later become integral to our daily lives. The series, with its distinct visual style and thought-provoking themes, has etched itself into the collective memory of television enthusiasts. Now, we turn to you what cherished memories or personal experiences do you associate with Max Headroom? Were there any lesser-known facts or anecdotes about the series that fascinated you? Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. We would love to hear your perspective on this iconic piece of television history. The Adventures of Max Headroom, as it's sometimes known, aired in the UK in 1989 as a 14-episode season on Channel 4. The show's futuristic graphics, considered cutting-edge in 1987, were crafted using a Commodore Amiga, a top-of-the-line computer of that time. The series raises questions about its timeline, with an 18-year-old character named Bryce, born on October 7, 1988, implying a setting in 2005-2006. The convergence of these elements adds an intriguing layer to the narrative, blending technology, storytelling, and speculation about the future. This unique combination helped distinguish the show in the realm of 1980s television. On November 27, 1987, the world witnessed an unusual event that left an indelible mark on the legacy of the TV series Max Headroom. On that fateful night, U.S. television station WGN Channel 9 in Chicago, IL, fell victim to an infamous hijacking by a man donning a Max Headroom mask. In a surreal intrusion, he disrupted a local news bulletin for 30 seconds and, two hours later, seized the airwaves for 90 seconds during a repeat of Doctor Who. The masked intruder, with a menacing grin, stared into the camera and embarked on a bizarre monologue. His distorted voice uttered nonsensical statements, from challenging TV host Charles Swirsky to mocking liberal ideologies. In a peculiar display, he held a Pepsi can while referencing Coca-Cola's slogan, threw it to the ground, and made an obscene gesture. The intrusion continued with references to the Temptations song, complaints about my piles, and even a staged spanking with a fly swatter. Despite numerous attempts, the identity of this intruder remains a mystery, adding an enigmatic chapter to the Max Headroom saga. This incident, an unforeseen twist in the series' narrative, further solidifies Max Headroom's unconventional and unpredictable presence in the realm of 1980s television. The Max Headroom sign, a British counterpart to maximum clearance, takes on new significance in light of this intrusion. It symbolizes not only the show's futuristic graphics and speculative timeline, but also the unexpected and unconventional events that unfolded beyond the scripted episodes. Max Headroom, it seems, transcended the boundaries of the screen, leaving an indelible mark on both fictional and real-world broadcasts. In retrospect, these incidents underscore the cultural impact and unique legacy of Max Headroom, a series that dared to push the boundaries of conventional television, both on and off the screen. In the realm of the 1987 TV series Max Headroom, interesting behind-the-scenes dynamics added a layer of spontaneity to the narrative. The writers, impressed by Matt Frewer's improvisational skills, would insert blank lines into the script, allowing him to showcase his talent during filming. Beyond the charismatic lead, 
The tech-infused world of Network 23 featured a unique choice of computers. All the PCs at Network 23 were Commodore 128 seconds, reflecting the show's commitment to cutting-edge technology, as was evident in its futuristic graphics crafted with a Commodore Amiga. Moreover, Max Headroom is not the only character with a name derived from signs. The Zigzag Corporation chairman, Ped Zing, takes his name from the street sign abbreviation for pedestrian crossing, adding a subtle touch of wordplay to the series. These details shed light on the intricate workings of the show, from the innovative use of technology to the clever incorporation of signs into character names. Max Headroom, beyond its scripted episodes, thrived on spontaneity and clever nuances, making it a standout in the landscape of 1980s television. Production on the 1987 TV series Max Headroom came to an abrupt halt, leaving an unfinished episode titled Families in its wake. Penned by Michael Cashult, the episode never saw completion, along with four others in various stages of development, Thera's Tale, The Trial, X-Mass, and Bring Me the Head of Network 23. This unexpected cancellation cast a shadow over the series, leaving fans with unresolved plot lines and unexplored narratives. The abrupt end raises questions about the potential directions the show could have taken, further adding to the mystery surrounding Max Headroom's television legacy. The unfulfilled potential of these episodes serves as a testament to the complexities and uncertainties that often accompany TV productions. The series, despite its imaginative setting, faced logistical challenges in terms of its shooting locations. While some exteriors were unmistakably filmed in a separate, defunct industrial location, the extent to which the Lorimer Telepictures' former MGM studio lot, later becoming the Sony Pictures' studio lot, played a role in the series remains unclear. This ambiguity adds an intriguing layer to the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Max Headroom, highlighting the blend of real-world locations and carefully crafted sets that contributed to the show's unique visual identity. These untold aspects of Max Headroom's production shed light on the series' untapped potential and the practical considerations that influenced its creative direction. The unfinished episodes and the enigmatic shooting locations offer a glimpse into the challenges faced by the creators, adding depth to our understanding of the 1987 TV series Max Headroom. In the world of Max Headroom, the character's iconic name wasn't a carefully crafted decision by the show's creators. According to the first episode, Max Headroom got his name from a chance encounter. Edison Carter, the protagonist, stumbled upon a parking garage exit gate labeled Max Headroom while evading security guards on a motorcycle. His memory, later downloaded into a computer by Bryce Lynch, adopted this as its new identity. Contrary to common belief, the image of Max wasn't generated by a computer. Instead, Matt Frewer, the actor behind Max, navigated the series in a complex makeup prosthesis. This makeup was then superimposed onto the screen using blue screen technology. The distinctive ticks that characterized Max's demeanor were created by occasionally repeating a single frame. Interestingly, Matt Frewer himself admitted that the demands of working in the Max makeup might have posed a challenge had the series extended to a five-year run. This insight adds a human element to the portrayal of Max, shedding light on the actor's experience with the character. These behind-the-scenes details provide a fascinating glimpse into the creation of Max Headroom, from the spontaneous origins of the name to the intricate process of bringing the character to life on screen. The blend of practical effects, makeup, and technology contributed to the unique and memorable presence of Max Headroom in the realm of television. As we bid adieu to the digital wonders of the 1987 TV series Max Headroom, let the echoes of the pixelated past linger in your mind like the fading hum of a CRT television. In the tapestry of retro-futuristic brilliance, Max Headroom threads through time, a symbol of the cyberpunk era's audacious flirtation with the future. As you reflect on the stuttering charm of Edison Carter, the sardonic wit of Max, and the neon-lit dystopia they navigated, consider the imprint this virtual voyage left on your own narrative. Was it a clandestine journey into the unknown or a vivid reminder of the unpredictable dance between man and machine? We invite you, dear viewer, to share the digital footprints Max Headroom left on your memory banks. What scenes flicker in your mind like ghostly glitches? What conversations linger like unfiltered static in the vast expanse of your nostalgia? Your experiences, your reflections, they all contribute to the living tapestry of Max Headroom fandom. 
Whether you found solace in the dystopian escapades or reveled in the quirky commentary on media excess, let your thoughts pixelate into the collective consciousness. Connect with fellow enthusiasts, unravel the layers of the narrative, and revel in the timeless allure of this cyberpunk masterpiece. Thank you for accompanying us on this retro-futuristic journey. Your participation in this digital dialogue adds depth to the narrative we collectively weave. Until next time, remember, in the vast expanse of the digital frontier, memories linger like fragments of code waiting to be decrypted. Stay glitchy, stay nostalgic, and most importantly, stay connected.